social media. I think it is wonderfully powerful. It's very cheap to get these messages out. I've looked at Twitter versus Facebook. What I found is that really Twitter has small inputs and big outputs, whereas Facebook I found really was some quite a lot more inputs to achieve the outputs. What I really love about Twitter is that you can literally reach anyone anywhere or everyone everywhere. Now that is astonishing. So for example, you know, if I tweet to Greg Hunt, Jamie Briggs, you can be pretty sure that someone is actually watching that. If they follow me, I can direct message them, and that'll mean that it'll actually probably go through to their mobile phone as an SMS. If they don't like it, they may block you, but um, you know, so be it, I block people all the time. Not ministers, I would add. Twitter did a case study, their first ever Europe, Middle East and Africa case study, how with Twitter advertising, go from about 4,000 followers to 12,000 followers. This is the app. I'm a bit embarrassed calling it the Burkitt Index, but I was told by the patent people that that was the best way to protect it. But it's really two things. One is, to my knowledge, it was the first ever index for long-term exposure to a public health risk, which is what those sort of colours are down the left. And that's because I got very frustrated with the air quality alerts every day, which for 330 days a year uh, say it's low. And of course, that's not the reality as we know. So I invented this. Um, it's had about 4,000 downloads, covers every local authority in England using Department of Health data. And actually, because it's just based on a spreadsheet, um, it could be done anywhere in the world. The circles show the number of deaths attributable to PM 2.5, and 15 seconds before the next one, it starts flashing at you. Some big hits in terms of getting community engagement. This is the sort of thing which I've found is really effective. The media loves nothing more than the government breaking the law or deaths or disease. What I'm trying to do is a very sort of you know, powerful, positive message. Whenever I do a media interview, I always write at the top of the piece of paper, opportunity, and I'll come on to the fact that I think there's a huge opportunity to re-engineer our cities and protect public health. I put in a Freedom of Information request to Transport for London, you can imagine they really love me. And uh, I asked them for schools within 150 metres of busy roads because that's what the scientists in California had said, um, you know, there was a causal link for the first time to asthma. I got a list back of over a thousand schools within 150 metres of busy roads in London. Well all of these really were the top um, news item uh, for a whole day in London or more widely. I asked. Transport for London for another request, which was um, diesel emissions by regulated pollutant by category of vehicle for every road link in London. Turned out there are 41,000 road links in London. I gave it to all the parties because what I do is very political but non-party. I gave it to all the parties. Uh, the Greens actually mapped it and of course it's a very powerful picture. Another Freedom of Information request, this time to um, Department of Environment food and rural affairs, asking for the most polluted places in the UK. The list came back and the Sunday Times, being of course great communicators, spotted that Grosvenor Place is actually the back of Buckingham Palace. You can imagine the headlines uh, on that. They ran it as an exclusive and it was picked up by every uh, national newspaper within about two or three hours. <laughs>